Hey guys, welcome to today's episode, and we are so excited because we have Louise Digby on our show, and today we're talking all about weight loss, and if you are stuck in a rut and you feel like you're doing everything right, but the weight is not coming off, then this episode is for you. So Louise, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. So let's talk a little bit about the how I first intro Like if someone's like, I'm eating clean, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, but nothing is working. What is some of the, like, give us like the top five reasons. Like you can say, okay, let's start here, let then go to here. What are the top five reasons that people are not losing weight? Yeah, this is such a common experience. I think that the first thing is so many women that I work with are not eating enough and they are really over restricting or not eating enough for the amount of activity that they're doing and you know that can cause them to be undernourished you know they're not getting enough nutrients they're not getting enough protein enough fats and we need all of that to be able to make hormones to be able to maintain muscle mass to be able to actually burn fat you know we need certain nutrients so I think a lot of people are focusing on trying to eat less when actually focusing on the quality of the food that they're eating is a a really big factor. And then alongside that, over-exercising or doing exercise that is perhaps a bit too intense can be a big factor because when we are overdoing it or doing exercise that's too intense, then it can actually drive up our stress hormones and cause an inflammatory response in the body and it can have the opposite effect it can actually make us cling on to fat or put on fat more around the belly and so often I find that when I'm working with someone getting them to eat a bit more and actually tone down the intensity of their exercise can have a really profound effect on the results that they're seeing so I'd say those are two of the the top things. And then also thinking about things like their hormones. Um, the hormones is a really big topic because there's so many different types of hormones. But the thyroid is a really big one. And if someone's thyroid isn't functioning optimally, then that is going to have an impact on just how fast their metabolism is and how efficiently they're able to burn fat. So making sure that the thyroid's working properly is a really big factor Um, and also ensuring that they're supporting their other hormones. You know, stress is huge and stress is, you know, stress hormones are so disruptive to your other hormones, to your sex hormones, to your thyroid hormones. Again, very inflammatory and stress can be a real blocker to weight loss as well. Did you guys know that 97% of Americans are deficient in at least one mineral? It's true. You need more than a dozen minerals for your body to function in its best. But with the standard American diet, it's almost impossible. So here's where B Minerals comes in. Guess what? All you have to do, take one little shot of this one, one little shot of this one, and guess what? It looks like this, but it tastes like water. Take one shot and boom, in 30 seconds a day, you're getting an entire thing of minerals instead of an entire cabinet of supplement bottles. So with Beam Minerals, we make mineral balance simple. One of the things that I don't think people realize, like if I did a trick question for you and I'd say, do women have more testosterone or do they have more estrogen? I think most people would say women have more estrogen, but the truth is on average, their testosterone levels are still far, uh, you know, their testosterone levels are lower than a present age man, but nonetheless, their testosterone is higher than the estrogen. And so people don't realize that, that just in a woman, like you need testosterone. And I think a lot of people don't realize that, hey, 
if my testosterone is getting low, I'm not going to feel optimal and you could be struggling with losing weight. What is yeah. your thoughts on that? Yeah, I completely agree. And, you know, if your testosterone isn't optimal, you're going to be finding it difficult to hold on to your lean muscle. And if we're losing lean muscle, then we're going to be reducing our metabolic rate. You know, muscle is metabolically active. So if we don't have enough muscle, we are going to be not burning as many calories at rest as we could do. So yeah, testosterone has a big impact on that for sure. Yeah, I um, have this supplement called that I take. It's by Upgraded Formulas. It's called Upgraded Tea and it has testosterone in it. And I will tell you, I notice a big difference. Um, it supports your free and total testosterone and I notice a huge difference when I take it. And if you guys want, if you use the coupon code Chantal Ray, I'll put the link in the comments. But I think adding testosterone, a supplement, um, is a really good idea. What about, um, you know, just taking hormone, like taking like bioidentical hormones? What's your opinion on that of someone wanting to take progesterone, estrogen? Because as someone gets older, Obviously, everything, your estrogen is going down, your testosterone is going down, your progesterone is going down. So supplementing with a you know, bioidentical hormone, what is your thoughts on that? I think it's a very individual thing. And I'm, I'm not pro or against HRT. I think that for some people, it, it works really well. And it's something that can really transform their, their symptoms and their progress. And for others it isn't something that seems to be as compatible for them. Um, but, you know, definitely when it comes to HRT, going for the bioidentical hormones is is the better option as far as or the research tells us, you know, having estrogen in the form of a patch or a gel is definitely far better than having it in the tablet form um, and having it alongside progesterone is almost always recommended because it's so important to have those two hormones in balance. Um, you know, if you've got estrogen and it's unopposed, then you're probably not going to be feeling as good as you could do if you had progesterone in there as well. Did you guys know that your thyroid's main food is iodine? And guess what? Mercury and other toxins gobble up your selenium and your thyroid glands need selenium to convert iodine to thyroxine. So if you have mercury fillings and with all the toxins and mold, your selenium gets, just gets gobbled up. So here's the bottom line. I take something called peak thyroid. It's got iodine, it's got copper, and it's got selenium. Everything you need to get your thyroid back to functioning without medicine. So go to ChantelRayWay.com slash upgraded formulas. Use the coupon code ChantelRay to get a huge discount. Yeah, I will tell you for probably about a year, um, the day before I was getting my period, I would get such a bad headache. I would get a migraine headache so bad that I would literally throw up probably like 10 times in a day um, because my hormones were just so off that day right before my period. And it what it what I realized that it was, it was the balance. Like in order for you to not have those headaches, your estrogen and progesterone have to be in balance. If one is way high or one is way low, that's a recipe for horrible migraines and horrible headaches. So what what kind of testing do you recommend for someone? Because I think the thing with hormones that is so difficult is that you it's very difficult to check someone's hormones on a regular basis. And so talk about how you evaluate where someone's hormones are at. Mm, yeah, I think hormonal testing can can be a bit of a hassle because you've got to get it on the right day. And, you know, if you're doing a, a decent test, then that can involve taking several samples. You know, I, I my go-to test for hormones is the Dutch test. 
uh, because I like that. Not only does it tell you about the hormone levels, but also how you're breaking them down and metabolizing them as well, which is, you know, really important because it's all well and good having normal estrogen levels or progesterone levels. But if you're not breaking them down properly and eliminating from your body properly, then you're going to be having hormonal symptoms potentially. So the Dutch test is great for that. But like you say, it's not easy to keep testing and monitoring your hormone levels. So it's, it can be helpful to keep track of symptoms and, you know, symptoms like PMS or menstrual migraines or mood, cravings, water retention, bloating, how heavy your flow is, how regular your cycles are. Monitoring all of that can be a really good way of keeping track of your overall progress often it can be I find it can be easier to assess the things that actually impact your hormones rather than always looking at the hormones directly so for example you know your toxic load your gut bacteria uh, your blood sugars your inflammatory markers these are all things that impact your hormones and how you produce them and eliminate them so sometimes that can be a good way of monitoring progress as well. So when you're, what would you say is the top three gut infections that you're seeing with clients right now when people are coming to you and they're like, you know, I'm having all kinds of gut issues. What's kind of the top three and give us some of the symptoms that you're seeing. And then when they talk about it, you go up, I know you've got H. pylori or you've got SIBO or What are the top ones for you right now? Mm, I think something that we see pretty consistently is SIBO, so overgrowth of of bacteria in the gut. And um, when someone has that, that can interfere with their absorption. It can cause a lot of inflammation. um, And, you know, the typical things that are out there, to kind of the general public to support their guts are not necessarily things that are going to help, right? You know, probiotics or fermented foods are not necessarily things that are going to help with SIBO. Um, So yeah, we see that a lot. And if someone has SIBO, then that can cause a lot of bloating. It can cause a lot of flatulence. Sometimes it can cause heartburn and acid reflux. Um, it can cause. So what what do you do for treating SIBO? It depends on the individual, um, because you know obviously there are certain limitations based on each person's needs and medications and that sort of thing. Um, but often using some herbal antimicrobials can work really well. So that could be things like berberry or oregano. Um, it could be things like garlic extract. Um, you know, they're all very antibacterial and, um, you know, using those for a few months can help to reduce those levels down significantly. Yeah. Or when you talk about like oregano oil, like in capsules and um, getting like high, high doses of um, like garlic in capsules, is that kind of what you're talking about? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then you're still finding if someone's taking even high doses of that, doing that for it's going to still take like a couple months for it to go away. I think it depends on the extent of the overgrowth. You know, for some people, it might only take four weeks, but for others, it could be two months, it could be three months, particularly if they've also got some yeast overgrowth along with that. Um, And, you know, if their immune system's very suppressed or if they're lacking beneficial bacteria as well then you know it could take quite a while for their population of those bacteria to get back to normal Mm. any other tips to get rid of SIBO um I think looking at how often you're eating is a big factor if you're eating more than every four hours five hours then that can actually turn off the migrating motor complex in our small intestines, which is a process that happens when we've not eaten for at least four hours and it 
is a process that clears debris and bacteria from the small intestine. So having those gaps between your meals can help to prevent SIBO, but can also aid in the elimination of SIBO as well. Um, and it also supporting your immune system is important. So, you know, making sure that your vitamin D is optimal, making sure you're sleeping properly and managing stress are all big factors. Um, and making sure your stomach acid is optimal as well. You know, if we don't have enough stomach acid, then the small intestine isn't getting sterilized when when we're emptying our stomachs and that is when there's more opportunity for bacteria to to overgrow up into the small intestine. So supporting your stomach acidity is a big part of getting rid of SIBO, but also preventing it from coming back as well. Guys, I just want to interrupt for just a second, and I want you to hear Paul Saladino talk about why liver is so important. And if you don't like liver, we have another option for you. Your ancestors were eating liver. And the reason that this sort of wisdom has been passed down is because liver is very nutritious. It's basically nature's multivitamin. If you look at the nutrients in meat, they're great. You've got zinc, you got B6, you got B12, you got some K2. But if you look at liver, it really complements what's in muscle meat. And there are many unique nutrients found in organs, specifically liver as a powerhouse of these, that are difficult to obtain outside of liver. Like meat and organs are like peanut butter and jelly. They just go together. They're supposed to be eaten together. The easiest way to eat liver is just to do it raw. If you don't want to eat liver raw, you can cook it. But the reason that I like to do it raw is because there are unique nutrients in liver that are probably somewhat degraded when you cook the liver. This really is like the most nutrient rich supplements that you can find. And they are amazing. I have tried them. I absolutely love them. So just go to heartandsoil.co, use the coupon code Chantal Ray and save you some money there. And you're saying like someone who has SIBO, like this is an infection that they could have that's causing them to hold on to weight. Why would that cause them to hold on to weight? So when you have overgrowth of bacteria, it can result in an increased production of toxins um, and those get absorbed into your system and then your liver has to process them, detox them, get rid of them. And when we have too many toxins in our system, that's something that can interfere with how well we're eliminating our estrogens. And one of the mechanisms that our bodies have to prevent the damage that occurs from a high toxic load is to actually stop fat burning or even to upregulate fat storage because we store our toxins in our fat. So, you know, sometimes people find that if they start losing weight, it can stop very quickly. And that could be partly because when they start releasing their fat stores, they're releasing a load of toxins to go with it. And the liver comes under a very high toxic burden. So that's one way. Um, but also when you've got overgrowth of bacteria, some of those bacteria can produce histamine. And histamine is something that can disrupt our hormones as well. Again, it's quite inflammatory. So those are things that are not conducive to steady weight loss. Mm. What else? So you talked about SIBO. What other infections, gut infections, are you seeing that are causing people to keep weight on? Mm. Often candida, so yeast overgrowth. So again, we see that a lot. It's it's very common, particularly if someone has taken a lot of antibiotics or if their immune system has been quite suppressed um, or if they've had a lot of food poisoning or just major disruptions to the gut environment. Um, so yeah, candida is something that can be very disruptive for similar reasons, but, you know, because it can increase your toxic load, also because it can deplete you of nutrients, you know, your um, the yeast can absorb your iron, your B vitamins, and deplete you of some of those really essential nutrients that are involved in fat burning. What are some of the diets or just the foods that you recommend? You know, are you, when someone comes to see you, what are you recommending for them? Is it like a paleo diet? Is it, you know, 
w- what is do you feel like people have the best success on when it comes to weight loss? I think it does depend on each individual, but as a good starting point, a paleo approach is is generally one that works well for a lot of people um, because it tends to be richer in protein, fibers, and fats, a bit lower in carbs, grain-free. Grains can be something that are very inflammatory and irritating for a lot of people. Um, So I find that a really good foundation, one that makes most people feel pretty good. And then building on that and adapting that based on each individual's needs is is usually pretty key. Mm. So what does let's hear about you. So like what kind of foods do you eat and what is like a typical day look like for you um, that keeps you at your optimal weight? For me, having a high protein breakfast is always absolutely key. I find that I feel best and I function best when I start my day off with a good protein and fat rich meal. So on a standard day for me, that would probably look like a homemade granola, which would be made of like flax seeds, sesame seeds, coconut, almond flakes, um, nut butter, and all those types of things, often with some berries, maybe with some coconut yogurt or Greek yogurt, full fat, of course. Um, so I find something like that works well for me, keeps me going for hours. Um or I might have something like eggs and avocado. Uh, so yesterday I had eggs, avocado, and some stir-fried veg. Um, or if I don't have that for breakfast, I might have it for lunch. Uh, lunches can be that or something like an omelette. Oftentimes it might be just leftovers from the dinner the night before um, because that's usually one of the quickest and easiest things that I can do. And dinners will always be homemade, cooked from scratch, plenty of protein, plenty of vegetables. You know, I'm usually trying to get half a plate of veg and then maybe like a quarter of a plate of carbs in the form of some sweet potatoes, some brown rice, quinoa, that type of thing. Mm, Sounds good. And then what does your workout look like? What kind of things do you do for a workout? So I'm quite a sporty person. I find that to get me moving, I need to be doing something that's quite social. So I play badminton a lot. I play netball. Um, and I, because those are things that are like set things in the diary, you know, there's like a club that I go to. That means that I kind of go pretty much without fail a few times per week. Um, otherwise, it's walking the dog, going for, you know, long walks most days or a couple of shorter walks every day. Uh, That's how, that's how I keep active. Mm, I love it. I don't know about you guys, but I am stressed. And if you're feeling overwhelmed this holiday season, then I get it. With all the family get togethers, it is just a relentless source of stress. But anyway, there is something that I've got called Stress Guardian. And it's actually made by Bioptimizers, the people who make the magnesium breakthrough, which I love, love, love. But anyway, they are literally made this new product. It has 14 adaptogenic herbs and it just regulates your stress. I just actually took some right this second. And it's awesome. If you go to stressguardian.com slash waste away and put in waste away for 10% off your first order, it's stressguardian.com slash waste away. Go there now. Well, what other tips do you have for women on what they need to do if you had to give them kind of the top four or five areas that you look at and kind of ask questions on of if they're not losing weight, what does that look like for you? I would say, um, as I said earlier, you know, making sure that you're focusing on nourishing your body as opposed to restricting. So try to look at food in terms of what is this giving me what nutrients is it giving me as opposed to what can I cut out of my diet to try and lose weight I think that's a really key shift to make um and I also think that again looking at exercise from a similar perspective you know what can what is this exercise doing for me okay it's 
maximizing my energy. It's helping me sleep better as opposed to how many calories can I burn? Um, and then I think making sure that you're getting plenty of variety in your diet, you know, it's really easy to get stuck eating the same things day in, day out. But particularly when it comes to plants, having a real variety of different types of foods is, is really important for your gut health. And one of the best things that you can do for your gut health, which is so key for everything that's going on in the body. So that's a good thing to focus on. Um, and then I think making sure that you are well hydrated. I know it's like one of the most basic recommendations ever, but despite that, it is you know, dehydration is something that I see in like pretty much all my clients. So making sure that you were focusing on drinking enough and making sure that it's not coming from things like fruit juices and sodas and you know pop fizzy pop and that sort of thing make sure it's coming from actually hydrating sources um i'd also think about um your sleep so sleep is so you know overlooked when it comes to weight loss but actually you know making sure that you get a solid seven to eight hours per night if not more is critical for not only your health and well-being but for your fat loss as well and i think it's important to not be sacrificing sleep in order to get up and go to the gym unless you're already managing to get a good seven eight hours we don't want to be you know trading some of that time asleep for working out because you're going to get more out of making sure you're well rested and recovered than you are from spending an extra half an hour, hour in the gym. Okay, awesome. Well, tell listeners where they can find you and where they can follow you. So you can find me, my website is louisedigbynutrition.com and you can find me on socials by searching at Louise Digby Nutrition. All right, awesome. Thank you for being with us and you guys stay tuned. We've got another episode coming up in just a few. Bye-bye for now.